G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, today I'm going to have another look at Antonio Subarats and what the hell is he doing? Getting all dressed up in his pseudo lab coat, which I assume is just his dressing gown, probably stole it from his mum. And he's down in the basement and he's dropping things on the ground. Well, I guess he had to go and put out a little piece of foam because his mum was probably yelling down the stairs, Antonio, have you fallen over again? Are you wearing a helmet? See, I think he wears a helmet because, um, well, look, I'll let you in on a little secret. Wolfie and I refer to him as Flat Earth Tin Tin because of the hair. And, of course, the hair is because of the helmet that he has to wear all the time in case he falls over. So, anyway, what was he doing? And have a listen to this and see what you think. When he puts the feather on the scale... Did you hear that? Did you hear that? You can just... Imagine Antonio saying that if he had Wolfie's video up and thought he heard something odd in the background, hey? And can you see? Can you see? So, Wolfie... Well, look, I'm not going to commit an argument from Antonio Surratt. I have no idea what's going on there. It does sound rather odd, but of course I've got no evidence to back it up. But that thing really does fall fast, and it does sort of dint the foam as it hits the ground. So... I'm not sure whether that's a real feather or whether it's a steel feather or what it is, but whichever way, the oddest thing is, of course, when Antonio's remade this video, he's put sound over everything to cover all of these little clunks and rattles. So why did you do that, Antonio? And of course, he's left out some of the videos where you can clearly see the hammer is actually falling faster than the feather. So why did you do that, Antonio? What sort of feather is it that makes such a rattly clunk? Could it possibly be a metallic feather? I mean, it does fall rather fast. I mean, I know he's trying to prove that he's on the moon or that the moon landings were faked or who the hell knows what Antonio is trying to prove. I mean, he's the sort of guy that sees a million dollar experimental thing like the Bremen drop tower and says, I can do better and I'll just hold these in my hand and let them go. Or he'll look at Brian Cox in the million dollar vacuum chamber and says, yeah, I can do better than that. And he'll just drop two things onto a foam in his shower dim, dim. and thinks he's doing it better. Really, Antonio, what are you trying to do? And then because I've just gone and topped over 1,000 thanks to Wolfie and Wade and a few of the other uh, wolf packers, that's very much appreciated. And for all the new subs, welcome, welcome aboard. And I was just going to point out a couple of new, a couple of videos from the vault. Gone and had a bit of a dredge through. And um, I thought these would be interesting for people who've probably not seen them. Well, the ones I'm kind of the most uh, impressed with or proud of. And the first one is this one. This was the um, uh, Himawari 8 versus Starman versus Electra L versus Discover versus ISS. So it was sort of like a five cameras in space all looking at one thing. So that was a really great piece of work, that one, and found a way to make them show up how they were all seeing the same crocodile-shaped cloud. So... I'll leave the link for that one in the description. The next one is um, Jerry Greater Sape in his flight on QF63 where he went from Sydney all the way to Johannesburg and um, he was kind enough to give me all the KML files for the GPS data and 13 and a half hours of continuous video to dredge through. So I tried to put all that together and present a nice little video that showed the whole lot of interesting little um, globe facts that we found along the way. There's probably about a dozen or more different things that come out of that video. So that was a really great one. And the favourite part of that was the when they were flying down around 62 degrees south and the sun was actually just standing still outside the right window of the plane, wasn't moving for about two or three hours. They were flying as fast as the earth was turning at that latitude, which was really fun to see. And the last little one was the fun one where I got and did a little bit of science and uh, it was called the Cold Moonlight Experiment. So this was a real slap for um, D Marbles with his claim that the moon is cold, moonlight is cold. So, And Sean Hufford loved this one, he went and mirrored it as well. So that was a really good little experiment. I went and used science and some Arduinos and some ESPs 82600s and they were great. And my fourth and final fun video, I'm just going to add this one in here, is from the uh, ISS, the uh, Flat Earth Killer of Choice. Well, this one was filmed when the uh, Russians had a... Remember they had that little hole drilled in their um, Soyuz capsule and they had to go and glue it? Well, before they came back, they wanted to have a look at it from the other side. So 
they sent a couple of cosmonauts outside with what things look like a big knife and a couple of garden shears and they just spent three or four hours hacking through the insulation to get down underneath it well there was bits of stuff going left right and center and all over the place as you imagine in zero g things just float away everywhere now flatties challenge you to work out where on earth you could video something like that there is nowhere you'd have to be in space in zero g in the vacuum of space And just as a final wrap up, was a new piece of uh, info that I saw today. It was um, a video by Scott Manley, great Scott's, great stuff that Scott does. And it was the Light Sail 2, where they launched a um, nano sat, which unfolded this huge 30 square meter light sail. And the fun part was they had a camera on watching the sail unfurl, and you could see the whole shape of the Earth in the background. And it was from about five or 600 kilometers up. So it was much higher than the ISS, uh, a bit lower than um, the uh, Starman Tesla Roadster, but you could see California neatly in the background. So have a go at that, guys, who don't think we ever show the Earth from space. That light sail too is just awesome. There's some really amazing images on their media website. Um, and um, the one that I really like is the uh, Falcon Heavy Launch Eclipse. So it's obviously taken from on the ground, looking straight up into the exhaust plume, which is blocking the sunlight. And that is a view I've not ever seen before. Beautiful. And I wanted to play Himawari 8 with that image, but it wasn't in the Himawari 8's field of view. It was, however, over near Geos 17. But if anyone can figure out how to get historical data from an archive for that thing, I would really love to know. So that's like the... Um, 23rd of July 1845 UTC would love to be able to find an image for a California around that time oh and the interesting thing about light sale 2 it was crowdfunded okay so if you like that how about you click and share and subscribe and be the first to get in on the next fun little adventure into destroying the flat earth now while you're doing that I'm going to literally destroy this little thing here